almost mid-May and that means it's time to put our strawberry plants in. Khaled here with the Plant Charmer channel. Today we are planting or transplanting 200 tray plants into this frame and the one that's behind that you can't see on camera. Uh, and I'm going to show you guys all the best tips and best practices so that you get a really great crop of strawberries this year. And of course a great crop starts with a great beginning. All right, so obviously the first thing you want in a good uh, plant production, you know, be it strawberries or lettuce or whatever, in this case strawberries, is going to be a good medium. So uh, fluffy, good drainage, good water retention. Uh, of course, these characteristics are found in peat moss based mediums or coconut fiber or core based mediums as well. So uh, as you can see, this is the medium we have here, super fluffy. Uh, doesn't clump up, doesn't turn into a ball like clay or anything like that. So our roots are going to have a really easy time going and digging through that. So no resistance from these mediums, which is great. They also exchange fertilizer with plant roots very easily, what we call cash and exchange capacity. So, uh, so that's great for that. So once we've got that, we want to mix in a fertilizer. So what, what I like to call a base charge. So what I've got mixed in there is 532 chicken manure, mix in equal parts with a 468 chicken manure uh, feather meal and bone meal based fertilizer so that's in pellet form it's a solid so it's all mixed in there strawberries do not really use phosphorus that much the reason i use that at the beginning of the season is because phosphorus stimulates the development of good strong healthy root systems which is what i'm trying to achieve here so their base charge is going to be uh is going to be that it, it turns out to be a 555, by the way. If you take that 532 fertilizer and that 468, they're more or less about a 555. So a balanced fertilizer. I use that in the beginning and in the future uh, during the season, I'll show you guys another product I use, which is a liquid, uh, liquid fertilizer. Or alternatively, you can also use a pellet form fertilizer that's specific for berries. I'll show you guys that as well. But right now we've got our gutters filled uh, to the top with that really, really nice medium. It's got perlite in, it's got oxygen in, uh, it's got everything that the plants are really going to love and, and are gonna thrive in. So uh, these plants here, tray plants are gonna go in there, but our first step was really that medium. I wanted to uh, put the emphasis on that a, a little bit because you guys know, super important to get a good start uh, and a good base as well to get started on. All right, so next step you wanna do is grab your watering hose and you want to basically moisten the medium uh, to a point where it's not soaking wet, but it's not dry also. So the ideal way to do this is to use a watering gun like this or a watering wand if you have one. Uh, put it on the shower mode. So shower like this. The reason I use the shower mode here is because it's, it's actually quite gentle. So it's gentle and it covers quite a good surface. So you don't want to force, to, anyways, you're not going to be able to, but you don't want to blast a lot of water in a really, really small surface. It's better to spread it out for absorption uh, and for all kinds of other reasons. So you're not digging uh, amongst one of them. So, uh, so that's it. Grab your watering gun, put it on the shower mode, and then you can just water like this. Try to walk at a steady pace. I cover two gutters uh, with basically one pass, like I just did now. So I'm gonna do the bottom two ones. And so this way you're putting a nice, even, consistent amount of moisture everywhere so that the plants will get good conditions. Now you can come back for a second pass. And that's it, just go slowly, not too slow but enough that you're getting uh, slow enough that you're, you're allowing some time for the water to actually penetrate and for enough water also to hit those gutters. All right, so for these four gutters here, that should be enough. They were already pre-moistened, so they weren't completely dry. So I don't want to overdo it. Now, the key step to getting a really, really nice, consistent, even texture and medium or across all your gutters is going to be to wait. So come back in 30 minutes. That's the next step. Come back in 30 minutes. You're going to have a nice, nice, nice medium that's uh, wet here, just like it's wet here at the bottom. Or if you go at the very bottom, you're going to have even moisture everywhere. So uh, whatever excess is going to drain, as you guys can see, it's dripping everywhere here. Uh, so that's going to help basically uh, make sure that every one of those gutters has the same moisture levels in terms of percentage. All right, so I've already put in a few plants, as you guys can see here and here. Uh, so I'm going to continue for this 
this segment or this part of the video to show you guys how to actually do this pretty simple uh, of course the fact that i have tray plants like this makes it even more simple so the plants come in pucks like this look at the amount of roots that there is on there and the plants are already awake so i mean fully awake they're flowering and all that so uh this makes planting a lot easier than using bare root uh, strawberry plugs like i've used in the past so six inch spacing about the length of your hand unless you're a giant or you're really 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 small so that would put us right here two fingers in the medium pull a little the fun with the fun thing with uh, gutters is they're actually flexible so you actually force them open even wider than they actually are put the puck in and then that's it just put some soil around and you're good grab another one of these look how cool tray plants actually are you can just go in because they have so much root you can grab them by the base and they come right out see so we're just going to do again the length of my hand right here two fingers in we put the puck in some soil around and that's done so basically all we have left to do at this point for the planting part at least is to carry on doing this until we finished i've got four trays like this so i'm gonna plant them and we'll be back and i'll show you guys the next steps all right so our two frames or actually our two sides uh are actually full i did not use 200 plants i still have a tray full actually so probably 50 plants left so i must have spaced them out a little more than i usually do but that's fine there's no consensus by the way on strawberry plant spacing so the only consensus is if you space them out more you'll get larger plants but in terms of yield and how many inches you should leave between plants it's really up for uh for debate up there so that's going to be fine but what you want to do at this stage uh these plants are very nice by the way look at that crowns flush with the um with the soil that's what we wanted now what we want to do is remove all that dead foliage so foliage just like this extremely degraded uh i mean it doesn't have to look like this by the way to be removed i mean this is useless you need to remember by the way quick reminder on photosynthesis photosynthesis is uh is is performed in the presence of chlorophyll so it needs the chlorophyll pigment chlorophyll is what makes the plants green in other words uh if you don't have any green on a leaf like this it's not working for you so it's just sucking up resources or stressing the plant so remove this remove all of that small stuff here so we're going to go like this through all of the 150 plants i have in there or so what you're also going to do i spoke with the agronomist and he agrees with me that at this stage these plants were just put in these flowers are useless so in order to allow the plant to size up we're going to remove all of the flowers including the small shoots okay so this is a flower by the way so uh, it has not opened yet but it's a flower truss that's elongating i'm going to remove that and we're going to do that throughout the entire uh the entire production i have here so all the little flower trusses here go anything that's not a flower truss stays anything that's degraded or brown or or not photosynthesizing is gone as well and this way we're going to have plants that are really clean uh that are not susceptible to pests or diseases as much because that's what you're going to get with dead foliage uh and basically plant refuse that stays there so you need to remove it for you know for optimal conditions you may not run into any problems but there's no guarantees there so we try to bring uh the odds of success on our side by doing all of the best things that can be done for the plant and then after that it'll do what it has to do so I'm going to carry on, do this, and then we'll be back for our final step, which is going to be to give these plants a really good soaking. All right, so done deal. The uh, plants are all cleaned out or cleaned up. Uh, if you notice, we've lost about 50% of the size of each one of those plants, but that's fine. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is I don't want you guys to freak out once you actually clean up the plants, remove the brown uh, dead leaves, and then the flower trusses, and you realize the plant is actually smaller than it was when you planted but it's fine it's perfect because we've actually removed the non-performing non-healthy parts of the plant uh, and we actually only left whatever we want the plant to focus on so you're going to see in the following weeks i'm going to keep updating you guys on this grow here this is in my backyard by the way so very easy to make the updates uh, i'll update you guys on that uh, now all you have left to do by the way is just give these guys a really really good soaking using the method i showed you guys before for watering just make a 
of passes. If you want to be even better, you can make a couple of passes, put the wand down, come back in an hour, make a couple more passes, and that'll be the best watering you've ever done. Again, my name is Khaled, known as the Plant Charmer. I show you guys how to kill it at the strawberry game. 10 years of R&D and developing new methods, and I'm sharing all of that with you guys, for you guys to get better gardens, better food, more fun in the backyard. I'll see you next time. Until then, keep it green.